And uh, yeah, as you know, the world has been grappling with energy security, climate goals, nuclear power, and that is once again at the center of conversation, right? Yes, absolutely. It's something that uh, we want to talk about at length because uh, these green initiatives that are coming in in a big way, clean energy is uh, something that India is pursuing, targets have been set. So well, what role is nuclear energy going to play in all of this? And already we have the Prime Minister, of course, he's going to be joining us. There are deals that are being spoken about with the United States. How exactly are we framing that is something that we'd love to explore in this discussion. Dr. Sama Belbao Ileon, Director General of the World Nuclear Association is joining us. And uh, Dr. Bilbao is going to be in conversation with my colleague, Hina Gambhir, news editor at Times Now. Can we have you back on stage as well? Welcome both. Thank you, Vikram. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sama, for joining us here this Thank afternoon. Thank you. This is, this is great. So we're going to be discussing atoms of change, the nuclear promise. It's a very different subject. It's new, it's evolving, it's expanding, and that's the reason why we are discussing it today. There are immense possibilities when it comes to nuclear energy, but at the same time, there are perceptions that people create around nuclear energy. There are misconceptions as well. So I want to begin by asking you, what is that one big misconception that you want people to forget when it comes to nuclear energy, when they think about nuclear energy and the possibilities that it can really bring? Well, you know, uh, we were just watching this super cool stuff about space and we were commenting very briefly how many people don't know that the, the rovers that are in Mars, uh, Perseverance, is actually powered by nuclear energy. And also that when we go to Mars, we probably are going to consider using nuclear propulsion. So those are very cool things. But back in Earth, I mean, I'd like to actually focus on Earth first. So now what we have seen recently is uh, a newfound pragmatism everywhere in most continents, in most countries in the world, where people are really making that connection, that very important connection between energy, 24-7 affordable, clean energy, and progress, prosperity, uh, social economic development. So what we have seen is in all continents there is a, a people are appreciating, I mean when I say people I mean policy makers, the, the, the finance community, the average citizen, the media, uh, they are appreciating the essential role of the current uh, nuclear fleet. As you know, uh, nuclear energy today produces 10% of global electricity this is the largest source of uh, electricity uh, in OECD countries, uh, second only uh, to, to hydro at a global level, mean carbon-free electricity. And it's 25% of our carbon-free electricity today. So, so we are seeing most and most countries that are looking into extending the life of these nuclear power plants. So they are going to operate for 60, 80, perhaps 100 years. So many of the reactors that we have today will be operating in 2050. Um, and then also what we are doing is new reactors. Why? Because we have heard today several times the global demand for energy is only going to increase. So nuclear energy is going to need to expand also. So we are seeing many countries in all continents looking forward to advance uh, reactors, whether they are small, medium, large, or super, super small. Um, so, and, and let me just say, I think that part of the reason why we are seeing this is, number one, energy security. I think many countries have become very aware of how important it is to be independent and, and, and self-sufficient when it comes to energy. There is, of course, uh, the sustainability parts, right? So we want to uh, address climate change. We want to address clean air, clean water, uh, efficient use of resources. And then, of course, there is the equity part. We want to make sure that we don't leave anybody behind, that we provide affordable uh, energy accessible to everybody. And then the last thing that I will say that is relatively new that we have heard also here and there today is the very important role of the intensive energy users. They have recognized that they need 24-7 uh, energy. 
and they are turning back to, to nuclear energy among other energy sources. And this is, of course, technology, but also the metallurgical industry, the oil and gas industry, cement, hydrogen, shipping, uh, aviation, etc. So very exciting times. Okay. Uh, but, you know, compared to solar, wind, nuclear faces higher upfront cost as well. That is a big challenge. Of course, it can actually bring about the transformation change that, you know, one needs. But how can the industry at this point in time across the world make nuclear energy more financially viable, at the same time attractive for investors as well? Right. Well, so, uh, as you know, all low-carbon energy sources, they, are, they have high capital investment. Nuclear is no different. Obviously, the difference is nuclear projects tend to be very large. So, of course, the affordability is, is a little bit different. So, but, but we are seeing that um, uh, ultimately a nuclear project is cost-effective compared to all other low-carbon energy sources. So, for example, we have examples, uh, Olkiloto 3 in Finland, when it entered into production, the price of electricity in Finland lowered 75%. So this is obviously very important. And also very important is the fact that nuclear energy is essential to the system. It's not just the generation, it's the stability, the reliability, the resiliency that brings to the, to the system that is also very important. So what we are seeing right now is that the finance community uh, is definitely understanding much, much better what it takes to invest in nuclear projects. So we are seeing more and more affordable finance being available for nuclear projects, green bonds, uh, taxonomies, I mean green taxonomies, uh, ESG uh, criteria are recognizing the very important sustainable role of nuclear energy. And then what I would say also that is, I think is very important is it's not just funding or, or finding finance for the nuclear power plants themselves. There is many opportunities to, to actually invest and grow the entire value chain of nuclear. This is from exploration and mining of uranium or thorium or other resources all the way to, to the entire value chain. Uh, for, for a country like India, what kind of an opportunity do you see when it comes to nuclear energy? Wow, nuclear is front and center in India right now. Uh, I was this week at India Energy Week, and I don't know whether you have been following the news, but just last week the finance minister announced uh, within the context of the new budget a goal of 100 gigawatts of nuclear energy in India for uh, 2047. But of course there is an intermediate step, which is by 2032, there is a plan to have 32 gigawatts of nuclear in India. And again, I think that all of you know that India is already a powerhouse when it comes to nuclear energy. We do have currently 22 operable nuclear reactors in India. We are building currently six reactors more. And, and we have a vibrant, uh, enormously uh, robust and knowledgeable uh, nuclear industry in India. And then you mentioned, or, or your colleague mentioned, how Prime Minister Nadendra was just, just this week, both in France and the United States, putting together collaboration agreements with U.S., with France, to, to accelerate the deployment of the already very good nuclear industry in, in India. They've already pressed the buzzer, but I'll just slip in one last very quick question. Beyond 2030, the way we are going you know, right now, what does the ideal global energy mix look like to you, and where does nuclear really fit in? Well, I don't think that there is one ideal mix. I think that uh, each country will organize their own uh, energy mix the, way, the, the best way for them. But in any case, in many countries in the world, uh, there will be uh, an important role for nuclear energy. So I think you know that at COP28, uh, nuclear energy was recognized as one of the key technologies that needs to be accelerated if we are serious about meeting uh, Paris Agreement goals in a timely, sustainable, cost-effective, and very importantly, equitable manner. So what we are proposing is that at the very least, by 2050, we need to have three times uh, the nuclear capacity that we have today. Uh, and this will really be a drop in the bucket. That will only cover electricity. If we are serious about everything that I told you about, about uh, decarbonizing other hard to abate sectors like metallurgy or oil, like gas or cement or other things, we will need much, much more than that. 
all right, three times of the nuclear capacity that we have, what we have right now by 2030. That looks great. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure. Thank you.